Good day class. I welcome you to study session 6 of NSC 206, which we discuss an overview of carbohydrate metabolism. The digestion of food carbohydrates such as starch, sucrose and lactose produces the monosaccharides, glucose, fructose and galactose, which passes into the bloodstream. The study of synthesis, which is the anabolism and degradation, that is, that is catabolism, of biomolecules such as carbohydrates is biochemically termed as metabolism. Hence, in this study session, you will be introduced to the process of carbohydrate metabolism, which entails metabolism of glucose, glycogen, process of glycolysis, and process of aerobic respiration and anaerobic fermentation. At the end of this study session, you should be able to explain aerobic respiration and anaerobic fermentation processes. You should be able to describe the processes of glucose metabolism. You should be able to explain the process of adenosine triphosphate production in the living cell and describe the process of glycogen metabolism. Let's look at aerobic respiration and anaerobic fermentation. Aerobic respiration is one way of respiration that uses electron acceptors and oxygen. Aerobic respiration oxidizes pyruvic acid to carbon dioxide and water. Aerobic respiration occurs as a result of oxidation of organic compounds in a reaction series that requires oxygen and produces ATP. In aerobes, compounds such as nitrates, sulfur, and sulfate are used. For the electron transport chain to work, a final electron acceptor must be present to allow electrons to pass through the system. In aerobic organisms, the final electron acceptor is the oxygen. Anaerobic fermentation is a reduction reaction independent of oxygen, and it converts pyruvic acid to lactic acid and enables glycolysis to continue under anaerobic conditions. Anaerobic respiration is mainly used by prokaryotes that live in environments that do not have a lot of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration is energetically less efficient than aerobic respiration. Many anaerobic organisms will die in oxygen and therefore can only use anaerobic respiration. Looking at glucose metabolism, carbohydrates that are consumed have their origins in photosynthesizing organisms like plants. During photosynthesis, plants use the energy of sunlight to convert carbon dioxide gas, that is CO2, into sugar molecules like glucose. Because this process involves synthesizing a larger energy storing molecule, it requires an input of energy to proceed. Solar energy is required to synthesize a molecule of glucose. In photosynthesis, a light energy from the sun is initially transformed into chemical energy that is temporarily stored in the energy carrier molecules ATP and NADPH, that is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, NADPH, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. The stored energy in ATP and NADPH is then used later in photosynthesis to build one molecule glucose or from six molecules of CO2. This process is analogous to eating breakfast in the morning to acquire energy for your body that can be used later in the day. The amount of energy needed to make one molecule of glucose from six molecules of carbon dioxide is 18 molecules of ATP and 12 molecules of NADPH. Gly glycolysis. Glycolysis could be defined as a sequence of oxidation reactions that converts glucose into pyruvate. Glycolysis reactions occur in the cytoplasm of living cell. In glycolysis, each glucose molecule is split and converted to three to two three carbon units, that is the pyruvate. During this process, several carbon atoms are oxidized. Enzymes in glucose metabolic pathway include the kinase, phosphatase, isomerase, dehydrogenase, mutase, enolase, and synthase. As soon as a glucose molecule enters the cytosol, a phosphate group is attached to the molecule. A second phosphate group is attached. Together, to, together the first step and the second step will cause the cell to ATP. The cis-carbon chain is then split into three carbon molecules, 
each of which then follows the rest of this pathway. Another phosphate group is attached to each molecule and NADPH is generated from NAD. One ATP molecule is formed from each molecule process. The atoms in each molecule are rearranged, re releasing a molecule of water. The, a second ATP molecule is formed for each molecule process. And the, the, this particular step will now produce two ATP molecules. Let's look at the tricarboxylic acid cycle, which is a TCA cycle. It's a phase of carbohydrate metabolism and it follows aerob anaerobic pathway from the stage of pyruvate. TCA cycle is also called the citric acid cycle, which is the commonest term that people use. The citric acid cycle stems from citric acid, which is formed in the first step of this cycle. This cycle is also named as Krebs cycle. The pyruvate molecules generated during glycolysis are transported across the mitochondrial membrane into the inner mitochondrial matrix, where they are metabolized by enzymes in a pathway called the Krebs cycle. During the Krebs cycle, high energy molecules including atp nadh and fadh2 are created nadh and fadh2 then pass electrons through the electron transport chain in the mitochondria to generate more atp molecules how do we produce atp the electron chain that is the the electron transport chain the etc you see is NADH and FADH2 produced by the Krebs cycle that we have discussed earlier on to generate ATP. Electrons from NADH2 and FADH2 are transferred through protein complexes embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane by a series of enzymatic reactions. The electron transport chain consists of a series of four enzyme complexes, that is from complex 1 to complex 4 and two coenzymes using ubiquinone and cytochrome C. And these uh, this enzyme complexes act, the, 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 these coenzymes, they act as electron carriers and proton pumps used to transfer hydrogen ions into the space between the inner and the outer, outer mitochondrial membranes. In the presence of oxygen, energy is passed stepwise through the electron carriers to, to collect gradually the energy needed to attach a phosphate to ADP and to, to produce ATP. For every glucose molecule that enters an aerob uh, aerobic respiration, a net total of 36 ATPs are produced. Glycogen metabolism. Glycogen is the major storage form of carbohydrates in animals and corresponds to starch in plants. It occurs mainly in liver. The synthesis and degradation of glycogen are carefully regulated so that sufficient glucose is available for body's energy needs. Both glycogenesis and glycogenolysis are controlled primarily by three hormones. The hormones include insulin, glucagon, and epinephrine. Let's look at glycogenesis. Glycogenesis is a very essential process. It involves the process of biosynthesis of glycogen from glucose, and it occurs in all the tissues of the body. But the major sites of glycogenesis are the liver and muscles. A considerable amount is synthesized in the kidney also. In the absence of this process of glycogenesis, the tissues are exposed to excess of glucose immediately after a meal, and they are starved of it at other times. Glycogenolysis, when the body, when the blood sugar level falls, that is when there's hypoglycemia, glycogen stored in the tissues, especially glycogen of liver and muscles, they may be broken down and this process of breakdown of glycogen is called glycogenolysis. Gluconeogenesis is just the synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrates such as glycerol and amino acids and it occurs chiefly in the liver but after several weeks of fasting, the kidney also undertake this process and eventually produce just as much glucose as the liver does. Looking at a brief summary of this key, the, def, the, the key definitions of, of glycogenesis, gluconeogenesis, glycolysis, glycogenolysis, we can see that 
glyco glycogenesis and gluconeogenesis they are both anabolic reactions here they're sentences and the catabolic reactions that involves the breakdown of uh, glucose we have glyco glycolysis and glycogenolysis thank you for listening have a good day